Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by the Chrome Soft Golf Ball from Callaway. Hello, I'm Anna Jackson, and this is your Golf Central update. Opening round of the Worldwide Technology Championship at Mayakoba, and Victor Hovland is looking for the historic three-peat, and he got off to a good start, opening round six under 65, highlighted with that eagle on seven. He uh, certainly caught fire on his second nine today, and he caught up with Todd Lewis following his round. In what is not a shocking turn of events, Victor Hovland plays well here at Mayakoba once again. You look at your scorecard, you start on the 10th hole, your first nine, you were kind of flat, even par, but you really turned it on the back shooting a 30. What was the difference in those two nines? Uh, yeah, I didn't hit any iron shots in the water uh, on the on the front, so that, that usually helps. Um, no, I, I felt like I played pretty well even on the back nine. It was just it's literally just two shots that, that cost me three shots you know so I very easily could have been two three under par on that back nine so I, I kept telling myself yeah I'm a little bit behind pace but if I just keep playing well I can kind of get back into it and certainly did that on the on the front nine. You said yesterday that you were wanted to make sure that you get back to simplifying your game did you feel like you had that out there today? Yeah I made made some really big uh, steps um, you know because I've had a uh, some issues with kind of short irons when they tuck the pins on the right and you get kind of crosswinds. I don't feel like I've been as good as, you know, just starting the ball online and kind of fighting the wind. So it never the ball never leaves the flag too, you know, off the uh, off the face. And I feel like that's just way easier to control. Um, so just trying to get back to hitting those cuts and getting a bit more neutral certainly helped off the tee. I feel like I, I had a lot of good drives and a lot of good tee shots to set me up to give me some good opportunities. Finally, as we move forward in this tournament, you're trying to win here for the third consecutive year. What do you feel like right now you're doing well with your game and what do you hope to improve a bit over the next three days? Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm chipping the ball pretty well. Um, and um, putting has been really good all year. Um, I, I think putted well again today um, you know I still have to, it's, it's still not as good as it has been the last two years here I've really made a, a ton of putts here so try to obviously keep improving on that but um, yeah just keep going in the right direction off the tee and into the greens I hit a lot of really good shots it's just about minimizing the, the mistakes well, playing alongside Victor Hovland this morning was the highest ranked player in the field, Scotty Scheffler, making his first start since becoming world number two as Rory McIlroy overtook him just recently. Now another nice round for him, six under 65, bogey free today as he caught up with Todd Lewis as well after his round. It's got a bogey on your card, um, made some great par saves and a, and a lot of birdies out there. How, how efficient were you in this round today? You know, I felt pretty efficient. You know, I didn't, um, I think when I hit really good shots, I hit it really close to the hole. I had a lot of tap in birdies today, which is nice. Um, it was funny, it was either I was hitting it to like a foot or I was hitting it to like 25 feet. So um, maybe a little bit of cleanup with the 25 footers, but when you hit a good shot and you see it go really close to the hole and you got to tap in, it's a really nice feeling. And I played solid golf today. I hit one ball and a hazard on three and um, I had a great recovery shot after my drop to hit it to like three feet and knock down in for par. And that kind of gave me some momentum for the rest of the round. We talked yesterday and you admitted you, you haven't been playing as well as of late. Is it was a round like this today, a good solid efficient round like you talked about, is that, is that to help increase the optimism a bit? I mean, I would think so. Um, <laughs> I, like I said, I, I hit it good today. I, I hit my irons nicely. I um, was shaping the ball well both directions. And you know, anytime you can stay bogey free is, is a really nice day. You're an aggressive player by nature, and this golf course is soft right now. Does that kind of play into your hands? You know, I, I feel like my, my strategy out here is a bit different. I'm just trying to really keep the ball and play off the tee and then just hit a lot of greens. Um, the greens here, they don't have a ton of undulation, so if you can maximize the amount of looks you're getting, um, eventually the putts are going to start falling and they'll start falling in bunches. And finally, the putter, you changed the putter at Congaree. You said you didn't putt as well as you may have thought you would at Congaree. How was it today with that putter? Uh, same as Congaree, I hit a lot of solid putts. Um, Congaree, I just I didn't see those greens well. Here, I, I see the greens a little bit better and I hit a lot of solid putts today. Um, but like I said, I had a lot of long ones from you know 20 to 30 feet and that were kind of going right up around the cup. And um, those are kind of length of putts where you can hit good putts and just go right around the cup. So it's kind of hard to tell, but I was very solid inside of 10 feet today. Malin Punter may be working the rest of the week. Appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Doug. 
But the man who set the pace today out opening round at Mayakoba, that was 26-year-old Will Gordon. He currently leads the way with a magnificent 9 under 62, hitting 15 of 18 greens. An eagle on five in that great stretch of 10 through 13, four straight birdies. So he joined Todd Lewis following his opening round. At Will ties his career low on the PJ Tour with that 62. There are a lot of things we could dive into in this round, but what particularly stood out for you today? Yeah, I think primarily just getting the ball in play off the tee out here is so important. Um, there's not really any room for error off the tee, and I, I did a great job of that and then was able to convert with my putter today. I, I, I made a lot of putts. Um, you know, it kind of started early, and I, I, you know, you just stay patient. I, I made a couple like bonus putts, I would say, like a 40 footer and a 25 footer. Those you don't expect to make, and when those go in, you, you know, it can be a special day. So I just tried to, otherwise, I just tried to stay in the moment and continue to give myself, you know, really good looks. And on top of making those kind of bonus putts, I converted from inside 10 feet today. All right, well, here's a stay in the moment question. You were nine under through your first 13 holes. Right. Were you thinking at all sub 60? And if so, did it affect you mentally or emotionally? Um, no, it started, it, the conditions got a little tougher there on, um, I guess it it was 14 the par four it started raining really hard and um kind of we played a couple two or three straight holes dead into the wind um and you know you're not really honestly a lot you guys shoot 11 out here or 12 and yeah I, I wouldn't really think about it until 10 especially with these closing holes there's not like a you know a give me birdie so um you just try not to get ahead of yourself i mean obviously you you know it's a possibility but i mean i, I might have thought about it but like you're you know, you got so so long to go, even though you've made so many birdies. So um, it doesn't really it doesn't really affect me. It's interesting when I talk to players when they shoot a great round like you did today. I ask them this question: Do you forget about today, or do you try to build momentum heading into tomorrow? Yeah, I think that's you know when I put myself in these positions, it's more of like it's just a learning opportunity to see what works in these moments and move forward. And I think um, I've put myself in these moments several times this mm -hmm. fall, and I think as cliche as it sounds, you just try to continue to stay in the moment and do what you can control, control your routine, your attitude, and um, kind of your commitment. And if I do those things over the next three days, like that's really all I can do. Mm -hmm. Great job today. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, also today, the DP World Tour announced its 2023 schedule that will see purse increases for the first four Rolex Series events and a guaranteed minimum for those who make at least 15 starts. So let's check out some of those schedule notes. Sir, with a minimum of 39 events in 26 different countries, the tour will see a record price fund next year that totals more than $144 million for regular events and a total increase of $50 million from the 2021 season. You've also got an increase in Rolex Series prize funds, plus exempt players in Category 1 through 17 will be guaranteed minimum earnings of $150,000 if they play more than 50 15 events. Well, a big week on tour for the Challenge Tour, guys. Uh, the Rolex Challenge Tour Grand Final in Mallorca, Spain, underway as after this week, the top 20 players on the Road to Mallorca rankings will earn their 2023 DP World Tour cards. So no doubt some drama expected over the weekend. And how about this from Roy McIlroy to make us all feel bad. What a special delivery he had today from FedEx delivering his third FedEx Cup trophy. He says, three looks a bit off balance. I guess I'll just have to win another. And we all expect you to, Rory McIlroy. Well, that is it from your Golf Central update today. Tomorrow, we will bring in you second round action of the Mayakoba Classic. We're looking forward to it. Have a wonderful evening and we will see you then.